So here we are in Malin on the Inishowen Peninsula in County Donegal on the eve of the Dubai Duty Free Irish Open. It's Pro-Am Day today. I'm here having a coffee with uh, the godfather of Irish golf, Mr. Dermot Galise. Dermot, what does uh, hosting a championship like the Dubai Duty Free Irish Open mean to the county of Donegal? Morning, Linton. Um, well, this is a particularly important venture. Uh, for Ballylift and Golf Club and for the whole county of Donegal, for the whole Northwest, in fact. Um, they're using this as a major promotional uh, exercise for the county and the region uh, to the extent that my understanding is they've invested something like 500,000 euro in getting the Irish Open here. Yeah. So um, big things are expected and uh, it looks like their gamble their investment is going to pay off because we look around us. I mean, the weather is simply glorious. It's like that all the time in Donegal, I believe. <laughs> so I'm told. Uh, I, I must have uh, hit been extremely unlucky on the odd visit I came up here and was almost swept out to sea. But um, no, no. I mean, good weather is a huge part of an event like this. And uh, sadly, the Irish Open has done very badly. Uh, weather-wise um, in recent decades. Uh, I know that people can attribute this maybe to a bit of senility or whatever, but I remember gloriously sunny days, particularly in the 80s at Royal Dublin and Port Marnock, uh, and uh, thousands of people walking the fairways. We've had difficult times since then, um, particularly in the noughties, but now the Irish Open is back on its feet. It's um, it's part of the Rolex series. There's a seven million dollar prize fund, and there's a hell of a good field, like by any standards. Yeah, yeah. John Ram, uh, defending champion, uh, seven to one behind Rory McIlroy. What do you think of this? You predicted it last year, of course, uh, that he would win the uh, Dubai Duty Free Irish Open. I uh, did. You did. <laughs> did I have money on him? You didn't have any money on him. <laughs> typical, typical. But uh, talk, talk to me about the, you know, the Spanish influence uh, on the Irish Open over the years, because it's been really important. It has. Um, the first, the, the revived Irish Open uh, took place at Woodbrook in 1975. Um, and it was dominated basically by Americans and Europeans, uh, but not including any real any Spaniard of any note. It was only the following year, 1976, when the event went to Port Marnock, that uh, Sebi Ballesteros played in it for the first time, and he made an immediate impact. It will be recalled like that that was the year when he was runner up. Earlier that summer he was running up to Johnny Miller in the Open Championship at Birkdale and uh, he was a sensational 19 year old at the time and um, he made such an impact on the Irish Open. I remember Joe Flanagan, the tournament director, saying to me on one occasion, he said, you felt if you had Seve you could build a tournament around him, he was that important. And then of course uh, 1985 as an amateur Jose Maria came along, uh, by which stage he was the best amateur in Europe, and uh, he won it. Uh, he won the Irish Open at uh, Port Marnock in 1990, and uh, then 1998, another great Spanish amateur, uh, Sergio Garcia, played in the field at uh, Druids Glen, and uh, as an amateur, he remained amateur. Played in the Masters as an amateur in uh, 1999 and uh, then turned pro and came back to Drew's Glen as a pro that year and won the Irish Open yeah. and then defended the title in 2000 at Ballybunion as John Ram is doing here, you know. So not only have they been, been very prominent uh, competitors, the Spaniards, those four Spaniards, but they've been very loyal as well to the event, you know. They, they, it has meant something to them, obviously, mm. uh, because they have certainly paid their dues from yeah. an Irish Open perspective. And Sergio Garcia, it, it was his first European 
uh, title. Yeah, it was his first major, it was his first uh, professional title, yeah. in fact. And uh, we can remember that, that particular year, the August of that year, he had that famous duel with, uh, with Tiger Woods in the PGA Championship at Medina when uh, he looked like a seriously challenging Woods for the title and hit uh, a famous six iron shot off the, the root of a tree on the 16th and then hopped up the hill like, uh, like a, a teenager would I suppose. But I uh, didn't win, but was second. I think he was second to to Garcia or to uh, Woods on that occasion. But that was when he made his mark yeah, internationally, yeah. really, you know, uh, as a serious player. And the hope was that he would become. Even the Americans were hoping he'd become a rival for Woods, you know, yeah. and it never really materialised. Yeah, yeah. So who's our money on this year? I mean, in the field and obviously the best of the Irish, we got. Rory McIlroy's favourite, thirteen to two. We've got John Ram, seven to one. I think uh, Cabrera Bello is sixteen to one. Uh, with Shane Larry, twenty-five to one. Uh, Paul Dunn, twenty-eight to one. Gray McDowell, forty to one. And Porrick Harrington, I'm not going to say what it is uh, in case I bump into him later, but he's an outsider. Yeah. Uh, who, who, who are you feeling it for? Um. Well. The, the, re the great hope has to be, Linton, that we have an Irishman up there. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to say an Irishman's going to win it, but I would certainly like to see an Irishman in contention yeah, yeah. Uh, on Sunday morning. It's great for I the mean, crowds. It's great for the crowds. It gives that extra buzz. I know there's an awful lot of great players, international players in the field, that people will enjoy enormously watching. But it gives it that little extra home bite, as it were, yeah. uh, to have an Irishman up there. And I'd love to see Paul Dunn. Um, you know, as winner of the British Masters last season, uh, he's, he's sort of, uh, he nailed his colours to the mass as a serious uh, contender on the European Tour. And maybe this could be his chance, like, to step yeah. up, to move up just that, uh, an extra step on the ladder, as it were. Uh, there's Ryder Cup. He still, he still has an outside chance of making the Ryder Cup team, and uh, a good showing here would certainly help his cause in that regard. Yeah. But there are other players. There are other very interesting players. I mean, if you take Danny Willett, for instance, uh, who won the Masters a couple of years ago, um, he disastrously lost form. Uh, in the wake of that triumph, but there are signs now that he's coming back, that uh, he's getting his confidence back on the greens, uh, he's putting the odd good round together, obviously uh, to do anything significant he's going to have to put four rounds together, but I'd love to see him doing something this week, and it's the sort of golf course I think that will suit him, because he's a very fine shot maker. Yeah. Um, I think it will, it's a shot maker's course, particularly length will not be an issue uh, because of the amount of run on the ball. Uh, in fact, I mean, they'll be holding back off the tee on a lot of holes. I mean, you'll find that the driver will be left in the bag and they'll be using long irons and maybe fairway woods just to get the ball into play. Yeah. Um, around the greens, Glashidi is very tricky around the greens and you're going to need a very sharp short game. Um, in that regard, I like Afi Banrat, uh, the, the Thai. Uh, he's a hell of a good player. I think he's seriously underrated. I would see him going very well. Um, Cabrero Bayo. Cabrero Bayo is, again, a fine player. Uh, he has Colin Byrne, um, whom we're all familiar with, as, uh, as having caddied for Retief Goosen uh, in the US Open victories. Um, he's from Royal Dublin, as we know, and uh, he's on uh, Cabrero Bayo's back since last year and uh, seems to be enjoying the experience enormously. And uh, I would think the Spaniards could do very well. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, thanks for your time, Dermot. Uh, we'll let you get up to Bally Liffin and uh, we'll catch up with uh, you tomorrow on day one of the Dubai Free Irish Open for another coffee.